Hello, my name is Ian McComb, and this is another in the series of consultations in dermatology from the Australian Institute of Dermatology. Today we're going to talk about pityriasis lichenoides. There's the chronica variant and there's the pleva variant, pityriasis lichenoides et variolaformis acutis. You know, a nice big Latin name. This is a condition that comes under the heading of the red scaly diseases. It tends to affect children or young adults. And it's a red scaly rash that comes out primarily on sun covered areas. In other words, it's maximal on the trunk and the inner aspects of the arms and the upper uh, legs of the non sun exposed parts. It's not as red or as scaly. Uh, as say gutty psoriasis is. Um, but that and pityriasis rosea are the differential diagnoses of this disorder. Let's have a little look at a case here. You can see the lesions are scaly. They're not too inflamed. There's a few little red ones here, but they're mainly these scaly areas that have come out in the trunk. And if we look a little bit more carefully, you can see that you can take the scale off. The scale covers the whole lesion virtually. And when you take it off, it's certainly a little bit more red and inflamed underneath here. But, you know, you don't have that red, um, markedly scaly rash that you get, say, in gutty psoriasis. And in pityriasis rosea, the scale is more like the peripheral scale that's there when uh, you know, the mica scale, which is the name that's given to this type of scale, is removed. I want you just to get an idea of the distribution. This was a young girl who had this, and you can see that it's mainly over the trunk. It isn't really in along the lines of the ribs, as you get in pityriasis rosea. It's much more scattered, just like you would get with, say, gutty psoriasis, but it's not as inflamed as gutty psoriasis, and the scale is different. So let's just look at a few more facts about it again. In the chronic variant, it's, it's chronic for a reason. That means it's staying there. The lesions, individual lesions, can heal, and they tend to leave white scars. But new lesions can come up for years, so this is why it's called uh, pityriasis lichenoides chronica. It's thought that this is a viral condition. No one's really determined the virus yet, but the uh, way in which it comes on, um, it's similar you know, to pitrosia, which uh, is probably a parvovirus, or perhaps uh, type 7 herpes. Um, or it's similar to pitros, uh, to gutty psoriasis, which is often in children, a post-streptococcal thing. So they think this is uh, post-viral as well, and the fact that it uh, clears up after a period of time. But if it is a virus, it takes a long time to get any sort of immune reaction. The histology shows an interface dermatitis. In other words, the damage is at the dermoepidermal junction, and the damage is carried out by lymphocytes. And there's often a mild lymphocytic vasculitis. By that, uh, I, I mean that there's a prominence of the dermal vascular plexus and there's lymphocytes round about these vessels. Um, and those lymphocytes are what damage the dermal epidermal junction. Some of them go up into the epidermis, and it's that irritation of the epidermis that causes that scar. Now, the lymphocytes themselves are uh, quite interesting. They some of them show monoclonality. In other words, they're all derived from the same progenitor cell. Now that's often a worrying thing, in that that phenomenon uh, is what you expect to see, say, in a lymphoma. But lymphomas don't appear to develop in these patients. There is a condition called lymphomatoid papulosis, but it's like this variant pleva, and we'll come to that just shortly. Let's look back at just some other examples of the more chronic variant. Chest, inner aspects of the arms, worse on sun protected areas. And if you have a little look at the scale, this is a bit more inflammatory, this one, but the scale um, you know, is stuck on the underlying area of erythema. It doesn't extend beyond it. It's 
probably better shown in this example here. There you can see the scale here. It'll often just come off in one piece when you put your fingernail to it. This, though, is obviously a much more inflamed variant to what we've been looking at in the, in, in the Pityriasis lichenoides chronica. And this is the PLEVA variant, Pityriasis lichenoides et variolaformis acuta. The variolaformis bit, by the way, um, refers to some of the lesions looking like the lesions of chickenpox. You know, in chickenpox, you get a good going chickenpox, and then you'll often get areas of necrosis like this as well. So, see how much redder the pleva variant is, see the little bit of central necrosis that you uh, get as well. And it can heal with uh, quite much scarring. So, the pleva variant, more inflamed, redder lesions, necrotic centers, they crust, develop necrotic centers, and you've got that variolaform scarring. Again, mainly sun-covered areas. Now, the histology, again, the lymphocytic vasculitis, but it's much more prominent. And in fact, there's sometimes hemorrhage from damage to the, uh, the, uh, the blood vessels. And the lymphocytic infiltrate occupies a wedge-shaped pattern. I think we've got some examples we can show you that. Again, it's uh, even in the PLEVA variant, there's this monoclonal lymphocytic variant. And there's another clinical variant of PLEVA called Mukahabaman. And really, it's just a more severe version of PLEVA, where the patient's febrile and the vast majority of the lesions are all ulcer and necrotic. Now, the thing about PLEVA is that, you know, though it may go on with crops of lesions occurring over some months, it usually resolves completely over a 6 to 12 month period, as if the patient develops uh, an immune reaction to some underlying virus. This was a case in a from Global Skin Atlas of a child. Uh, you can see the variation in the morphology of the lesions, again, mainly in covered areas, and the ulcer and necrotic variant. This was the trunk with some more of these ulcer and necrotic uh, lesions. There's a condition called lymphomatoid papulosis, which is uh, often a monoclonal di disease of lymphocytes, and it will or can develop into uh, a true lymphoma. And the lesions in lymphomatoid papulosis are often bigger than those in PLEVA. They're just as ulceronecrotic, but they resolve often in a period of several weeks, and then new ones will come up elsewhere. So biopsies are useful if there's a fair, if the, the ulceronecrotic lesions are big, um, and if they're fairly infiltrated. And if there's not so many of them, there's usually a lot less lesions in lymphomatoid papulosis than there is in uh, the PLEVA variant. The PLEVA variant has often between 50 and 100 uh, lesions. The histopathology is a bit like this. Here's your perivascular infiltrate up here in the papillary dermis. Here's the marked infiltrate of lymphocytes into the overlying uh, epidermis here. Often there'll be a bit of parakeratosis overlying this. And if you uh, look into the infiltrate, the infiltrate often, you see the variation in size of cells there, infiltrating. And sometimes you even get the equivalent of little pottery and microabscesses, which you expect to see in the T cell lymphoma. But uh, these cases don't uh, develop into, into lymphoma. There's a more severe, extensive PLEVA variant, and, uh, and this almost looks like a vasculitis. Uh, you need to get a close-up here. Sometimes, as I said, though, there is hemorrhage in the PLEVA variant, so it wouldn't surprise you if some lesions look like a vasculitis. Um, similarly with this one, these may not blanch because of the hemorrhage. So, how do you treat this condition of pityriasis lichenoides. Well, the chronic variant, um, you know, it can it can basically be left. So, you know, you don't have to treat this particular variant here. You might just say to the patient, you know, a bit of moisturizer, go and get a bit of sun on it, and don't worry about it. Um, because we said that one tends to go on for some years before it eventually settles. So I think some ultraviolet is a reasonable way of treating, um, treating that variant. Tacrolimus. Protopic, and we don't have it here in Australia, but protopic ointment um, can be used 
it inhibits the T cells, it inhibits some of those lymphocytes that are coming into the epidermis. Topical steroids can help a bit uh, as well, reduces a bit of the inflammation, but it doesn't make the lesions resolve any quicker. Now with the PLEVA variant, um, the acute red one with some muscular necrosis, oral erythromycin and tetracyclines uh, seem to have some effect. And you might wonder, you know, why are antibiotics having an effect? But these drugs on the doses used also have a marked anti-inflammatory uh, action, and it may simply be because of that. Again, topical trichorhymus for the, the more acute variant here and topical steroids. Narrowband UVB uh, for several months can, in fact, help here. Azithromycin orally can uh, be effective too. Um, and then there's low-dose methotrexate. You know, we're always a little bit concerned because of the mono monoclonality of some of these lymphocytes. Uh, and some people use low-dose methotrexate to treat this condition. Etanercept, one of the TNF-alpha uh, drugs, the biologics, it has been uh, useful. It's helped in some, but um, some of the others, Reptiva, for instance, uh, infliximab, it's actually been shown to um, precipitate an attack of pityriasis lichenoides. And as these are, uh, you know, they're an anti-inflammatory, uh, um, they're partly immunosuppressive. It, uh, it might not be surprising that might happen. The Mukahabaman variant, you know, the febrile, also known necrotic variant of PLEVA, oral steroids are sometimes necessary uh, for that for a short period of, of time, but then follow it up with some ultraviolet to settle it down. So, pityriasis lichenoides, an unusual uh, condition, a chronic uh, variant. Uh, new lesions can come up for years, mild lymphocytic vasculitis, and the PLEVA variant, much more aggressive, uh, much redder, necrotic centers, variolaform scarring, and the mucohabament, the severe febrile ulcer and necrotic variant. That's pityriasis lichenoides. Interesting condition. We don't really know the underlying cause uh, for this, but the majority, vast majority of cases do uh, improve with time. Bit of ultraviolet here, bit of ultraviolet, and perhaps the use of uh, erythromycin and tetracyclines in, or even low-dose methotrexate in the uh, PLEVA variant. Thank you very much.